what do you think of this truck? It's a super truck, the truck of the future. They say it cost about $39 million to design and build the thing. It doesn't look very futuristic. Was it money well spent? You bet, every penny. Hi, I'm Jim Park with today's trucking's ultimate test drive. I'm in Denton, Texas, the home of Peterbilt Motors design and manufacturing operations. And with me are two of the team leaders on the super truck project, Ken Damon and Bruce Besner. This is the first of four super trucks funded in part by a $284 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy. The idea was to spur the development of advanced technologies that private companies might shy away from because of the cost. What Cummins and Peterbilt accomplished with their $39 million share of that grant was simply astounding. Here's Ken Damon to explain the goals of the project and some of the steps they took to achieve them. The goal was to deliver a truck with 50% improved freight ton economy and freight ton economy is miles per gallon measured in ton miles per gallon so it's tons of freight per mile per gallon. Peterbilt took on the partnership with Cummins and felt like we wanted to not only do a 50% freight ton economy improvement in a drive cycle route but we also thought there was an opportunity to do further improvements so we proposed that we could do 68% improvement in a freight ton economy in a 24-hour duty cycle as well as the 50% improvement in an 11-hour drive cycle. And the reason that's important is because drivers are often on the road overnight running the truck engine to solicit their hotel loads, their air conditioning and other features that are necessary to uh, make their life on the road comfortable. The achievements Ken speaks of are for the entire truck, tractor, trailer and engine. But the Department of Energy also wanted to see some improvements in the efficiency of the engine alone. Diesel engine efficiency is measured by its ability to convert the amount of chemical energy in diesel fuel to motive power at the crankshaft. Historically, much of that energy is lost to heat. Exhaust heat, heat that's removed by the cooling system, and even heat lost to the exhaust gas recirculation system. In fact, today's most modern and efficient diesels have a typical brake thermal efficiency rating of around 41 to 43 percent, meaning that less than half of the energy in a gallon of diesel fuel actually goes to powering the truck. Cummins managed to achieve a 51% brake thermal efficiency rating with the ISX-15 engine in the super truck. That's an astounding 20% improvement. Cummins put together a engine package that had to go from a 42% engine to a 50% brake thermally efficient engine. Historically, engine companies are very pleased with 1 to 2% leaps in brake thermal efficiency. And I think we've been stuck at about 42, 43% for a number of years with with fractions of a percent improvement beyond that. This required a holistic approach to the uh, overhaul of the engine, looking at air handling, friction reducing characteristics, uh, down speeding the engine, as well as a waste heat recovery system, which, which harvests heat that is normally dumped overboard, runs it back through a parallel system on the engine that ultimately ends up putting that waste heat back into the crankshaft to help drive the truck various systems that we added, aerodynamics, the uh, waste heat recovery system, uh, the APU, all added weight to the truck. Well, in order to improve freight efficiency, we needed to take not only the weight of those components off somewhere else, but take additional weight off the truck to physically improve the freight efficiency. Every pound of truck we took off was another pound of freight we were able to carry with both trucks, the comparison truck and the demonstration truck, being at 65,000 pounds gross vehicle weight in the test mode. People will ask, why did you use 65,000 pounds? And the answer is that most of the country runs in the range of 65,000 pounds. Historically, 60 to 70,000 pounds is what most, most transportation companies carry. 80,000 pounds is probably 10 to 15% of the market. And so we felt like the program was geared toward the population that was going to benefit the most. It's worth noting here that the super truck funding programs enabled Cummins and the other groups as well to set aside the usual financial constraints imposed on research and development. Shareholders of these companies demand good return on investment on a quarter by quarter basis. Few companies can afford to invest this kind of money in long term research on products and technology that may or may not ever come to market. This team was highly focused on developing technology that will make it to market. Everything we did to get onto this truck had to answer two questions. Will it improve fuel economy and will it be commercially realizable? 
Now we don't know all the details of the commercial realization on, uh, for the program just yet. We had to get these trucks built, but we were stopping and checking ourselves along the way and saying, do we see this particular aspect of the project getting into production? So all of this has been very achievable. I think what the Department of Energy did is kickstart the industry a bit to, set, to break down some traditional barriers, got some money freed up from themselves, but they required the industry to be equal partners in it. They didn't want to be looked at as propping the industry up. They are breaking technology barriers. And what this did is freed up a team of people to go and realize those and make real parts, real trucks, and do real testing and prove out that the technology is there. We now need to go commercialize it. Peterbilt and Cummins teams had some specific goals at the start of this project. They were shooting for a 68% freight ton economy improvement over a 24-hour duty cycle and a 50% freight ton economy improvement on an 11-hour duty cycle. They exceeded both those goals by some margin, achieving an 86% improvement in freight ton efficiency over the 24-hour duty cycle and a 76% freight ton economy improvement on the 11-hour drive cycle. They left very few stones unturned getting there. The other three videos in this series go deep into the technology and the hardware that enabled the team to exceed their goals. Check those out as well. From Denton, Texas, I'm Jim Park with today's Trucking's Ultimate Test Drive Series. Drive safe and keep your revs down.